Uh, doesn't that make you feel happy? It makes feel, me feel happy. Uh, that right there was Reds, Tillers, and More. Uh, that's a video that he put on his channel. I think I think it was today. Um, but anyways, I saw it. And I was like, you know what? I got to use that on my channel. Because that uh, dire wolf that he is running, that's what I call, call it anyways. That's um, one of the... Um, or that is the Christmas giveaway for 2022. Yeah, uh, Red was the one who uh, who who won the the chainsaw, and it's really good to see it getting used. And he's happy with it. He likes it, and it clearly runs excellent. So um, that right there, I think I, what I did was I I tried something just a little different, and um, I believe. The exhaust roof on that is like 110, 112, something like that. Uh, and it has the 620, uh, I think it has the 620 dual ring piston in it. I could be wrong on that. But anyways, very clearly, as you can see, having that really high exhaust roof does not hinder its rpm capabilities so uh it's weird see i came into this game a little bit later than a lot of folks um and people thinking that you need a high exhaust roof in order to be capable of pulling high rpms it's really weird to me um and and that's probably all because of me coming in late to this. Other people have already kind of disproven that. Um, the only one that I that really comes to mind, actually, no, there's there's two that come to mind. Both <laughs> Charlie Briscoe, of course, you guys, you know that uh, Charlie Briscoe, as well as Pat. Uh, Pat, whenever I, I can remember, I was talking with him early, early on, and I was following the advice of certain people on youtube let's just put it that way and um and i was thinking that i needed whatever saw that i was working on at the time to be around 100 or 99 on the exhaust maybe i was even lower than that or higher than that i can't remember um and pat was like nah man like 107 109 <laughs> and i was like what and, you know, we were talking about, I think we were talking about a 346 XP. And I was just like, no way. In my head, I didn't tell him that. But in my head, I was going, no way. But, yeah, uh, Pat is really well known to build a killer um, uh, 346 XP. Um, and he shoots for about 107, 109. Um, I believe Matt House does the same thing. Um Charlie's still with his 50cc stall, saws. A lot of times he still likes... He'll, he'll do a, high, uh, a low exhaust roof. He will. But he, he tends to favor, it seem, seems to be, uh, between 102 and 105 for his smaller saws. Um, 
but uh, with me, I've I've learned too with my um, the Thunder Kittens that I build, the forty nine ten Echoes. I always am aiming for about one oh seven on that exhaust roof, and they still scream. <laughs> I mean, you 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 free spin tune them to like fourteen five, and you're golden. Uh, that's fourteen thousand five hundred RPMs. So you do not need a high exhaust roof in order to promote um, higher RPMs. Uh, now, of course, there are various different things that we could talk about and go in and this and that. And some things, yes, you want to have. A higher roof, you know, absolutely. The longer the stroke you have, um, the 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 easier it is, or the less need of a low roof you have. If you've got a real long stroke, right, you don't need um, a lot of time f to make use of that the power of the, um, or the energy of the explosion. Short strokes, you really need that time, right? Like a, a, typically a, f a 50cc saw is going to be running um, a 32 millimeter stroke, roughly, okay? Well, that's a short stroke, and so you want to utilize as much of the energy of the explosion as possible, which means you want to have a low exhaust roof, before you release the pressure of that explosion. This Echo 590 here has a very long stroke. And um, while I am still running really low exhaust roofs with this one here, like I said, I think it's like 112. May have even been 114 on the exhaust roof. I can't remember. But it was really, really, really low because I wanted this saw to chug a lug, a lug, a chug, a chug. And um, so anyways, uh, what was that? so it, since it has that long stroke, I don't need that low of an exhaust roof. But obviously it still works and it's still getting up there and it's still coming right up to probably 12,000 RPMs in this cut that we see right here. Or, you know, if he's dogging in on it, you know, that's a different story. He's probably dogging in on it. And it, it they tend to kind of run better when you dog in on them. So, um, but, you know, still, you know, what's that thing running in the cut? I bet you it's running 11,000 plus, you know. So, yeah. Oh, and for Jeff, this is for you, buddy. All right. Uh, so, um... Basically, we had talked a little bit, and he was like, yeah, yeah, the RPMs in the cut, you don't need to do that. It's, it's this and that and that and this and this. And he's not wrong, you know. But the reason why I do RPMs in the cut, why I measure that, is because that's my metric. That's just how I measure things. Um, if I got a saw that's capable of doing that in the wood that I have, uh, with the chains that I run, then I am understanding of how much power that it has. That's, that's all it is. It's a metric. I don't have a dyno, and um, I can't, you know, like I don't have anybody running a stopwatch to where I can go uh, and make an adjustment and do a cut, and they go, okay, you lost a second. And I go, okay, great. You know, let's go a little bit further. Oh, nope, you're back up there. Okay, so... It's just a way for me to measure it in real real time. So I know that if I've got a saw that is feels powerful, but it's only running at 10,500 RPMs in the cut, then I know that I need to do something to promote higher RPMs. Because from what, what I have to work with and what I'm learning is that whenever I've got a saw that will run 12,000 RPMs or close to it, close to it with the chains I have and with the wood that I have. And, you know, of course, it depends on the size of the wood and everything. But I'm going, yes, yes, this is, this is a powerful saw. Prime example of that is the 660 clone saw that I just built. 
being capable of pulling um, 28-inch bar through a full 24 inches of red oak at 12,200 RPMs. That's a good, strong saw. and That's running. That's ripping. That's, we call it shit and get. That thing will shit and get, <laughs> you know? And so it makes me happy. Uh, so that's the only reason I'm, I'm measuring with the RPMs. But this video started out with the Dire Wolf and uh, Red's tillers and more go check out his channel if you don't know about it you know he's just got a little channel he likes to put up there the stuff that he's working with and is interested in it at the in the moment and i'm very happy red that you are um you are enjoying that echo because i'm proud of them they run good and you know this right here that's the way mine run too you know whenever i test them yeah, they'll beat that MS-400 in stock trim, you know, absolutely. Uh, I've, I've seen that. Uh, I, I haven't actually had that test myself because the one time that I had the chance to do it, the only chain that I had for the steel was, it was really blunt and it wasn't fair. But what I did test was that the uh, uh, my dire wolf would outcut um, the Husqvarna 268 with a muffler mod, as well as the Yonser Red 670, and of course the 562 as well. But um, uh, both of those two saws, the the 268 and the 670, are right there neck and neck with the MS 400, and um, and my dire wolf could beat those. So, anyways, it was just good having uh, somebody else run my saw and it do well all right there you go